First of all, I'd like to say thank you very much uh, for the centre, uh, Emily. Ask questions such as, well, has there been an extradition request yet? The only speak for five minutes. bodies in the United States. Here, Julian Assange expressing himself, yes. Mm -hmm. Julian, we can see you and we can hear you. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm going to try very hard to only speak for five minutes. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you very much uh, for the center, uh, Emily, uh, Christoph, uh, and I'm sure there must be others behind the scenes uh, who managed to pull this event uh, together. That's a very heartening thing. Uh, to see, uh, and to everyone uh, who's bothered to think about the situation uh, and to come. Um, now, just, uh, I understand I'm going to speak a little bit longer, so I'll just um, make a few comments. Uh, first of all, um, it is necessary to understand how the law comes to be in practice. Um, uh, it comes to be as something that descends from uh, the build-up of the state. Uh, and the build-up of the state is uh, as a result of, a, ultimately, a military domination of a particular area of land mass. And the law uh, is created in order to uh, reduce the burden upon the military units occupying that land mass. Uh, now, Lightly armed police are deployed instead of heavily armed soldiers because it's inefficient to constantly deploy heavily armed soldiers. Uh, and similarly, in relation to uh, attempting to gain support from the populace or dealing with uh, factional disputes behind the dom dominant groups, uh, it is necessary to create uh, well-defined procedures and people to judge those procedures. Uh, and that is what erects the whole structure uh, of the law uh, regardless of how we then try and dress it up uh, or um, what kind of taming of that structure uh, might produce beneficial uh, surface effects. And um, whenever a case becomes big enough uh, in terms of affecting those fundamentals of the state, uh, its ability to keep order, uh, the dominance of its existing establishments, or its relationships with key allies, then the law in practice uh, is swept aside. Now, in order, order to do that uh, in my situation, um, here in the United Kingdom, uh, new judge-made law uh, had to be made. Uh, for example, new judge-made judge law uh, overturning parliamentary law, uh, recognizing that a mere partisan prosecutor and not a court uh, could extradite someone from this country. Uh, now, that eventually was something that threatened uh, the sons and daughters of the establishment here uh, because they had a number of banking cases uh, in Germany and uh, other places in the continent. And so new law, corrective law, was introduced in Parliament uh, and overturned that, um, which it did. Uh, but that corrective law uh, uh, was structured in such a way that it did not apply uh, to any person whose case had been decided but who had not yet been extradited uh, under the 10-day window of the EAW. Uh, and there was only one person in the UK uh, that fits that designation, uh, and that is me. Similarly, in the United States, um, the uh, aggressive abuses uh, towards Chelsea Manning uh, not only uh, violated international law, not only violated U.S. domestic law, uh, they even violated U.S. military law, um, and something that was eventually found uh, in Manning's case, that he had been subject to abusive treatment uh, in the U.S. military prison system. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, despite that formal finding, he received um, no benefit. So I, I, I want people to, um, to understand the, the reality of the situation that I am in 
and that my staff are in uh, is a political situation and the politics are so intense that unfortunately uh, most elements of the judiciary simply fall into line. Now I say most elements because it's not true for all. For example, in the Supreme Court case here, uh, Lord uh, Mance uh, and Lady Hale, two Supreme Court judges, uh, went our way. But we knew beforehand, um, Gareth Pierce, my uh, lawyer here, uh, advised me that uh, Lady um, Hale and Lord Mance would go our way uh, and the, the Chief Justice uh, Phillips uh, would be opposed uh, and then we were estimating what would happen to the others uh, simply because of their relative uh, political uh, and social positions. Now, I look towards what's happening in Sweden with a lot of concern. So in the same week uh, where Sweden refused to enforce the UN decision, um, it agreed to a basing agreement uh, that gave US troops immunity uh, on its soil uh, and uh, NATO troops as a whole. It kicked out the Right Livelihood Award from its parliament. Uh, that's the Swedish Alternative Nobel Prize that had been awarded for the past 30 years uh, in its parliament as a prestige rival to the Norwegian uh, Peace Prize. Um, why was the Right Livelihood Award kicked out? Well, the excuse given by the President of the Parliament was that uh, there simply wasn't enough space uh, in the Parliament to be hosting uh, such an award. The reality is that 80% of the time the Parliament's been empty and it's never been a problem in the past 30 years. The change is that last year the Right Livelihood Award uh, was awarded to Edward Snowden. Uh, and that is something that simply cannot be uh, geopolitically tolerated in that country. Uh, and so a convenient excuse is used in order to make sure uh, Sweden does not offend uh, the United States again, including uh, the effective destruction uh, of Sweden's version of the Nobel Peace Prize uh, because of the risks associated with anything that might offend the United States. Uh, in Sweden, uh, Christoph was speaking about a uh, what is the nature of uh, non-refoulement in relation to Sweden. Um, well, Sweden has extradited every single person that the United States government has asked for since the year 2000, with no exceptions. Here in the United Kingdom, the situation is pretty bad. Uh, about 90% of people uh, the United States government asked for are extradited. In Sweden, it is 100%. Um, now, our ability to uh, to seize hold of the uh, cases uh, that WikiLeaks is involved in, there's uh, around a dozen different cases, uh, criminal cases against us, uh, which are in the United States, uh, Sweden, uh, Saudi Arabia, and Australia. Criminal cases uh, that we are pursuing uh, against others, uh, principally the FBI. Uh, in Denmark, uh, Germany, uh, Sweden, uh, Iceland, um, and um, civil litigation, uh, which we have had a little bit of success uh, against the visa mask card blockade. These cases um, are largely uh, thwarted by abuse of process. And I give you um, the two most important examples. Uh, in the United States, um, the long-term grand jury uh, into WikiLeaks uh, and against me uh, is untouchable in terms of litigation. It is a secret process. Uh, no defense counsel are permitted. Uh, there's no ability to, to litigate decisions that it is taking and is not taking. Uh, a place where you might gain a litigation uh, purchase uh, uh, could be in something that the government is doing or not doing, which you have concrete evidence for. Okay, well, we have a variety of warrants uh, with my name on them. We know many people being pulled into the grand jury, uh, but what we need more than simple warrants uh, is uh, some of the uh, pages from the uh, hundreds of thousands of pages in the pending prosecution. Now, when we have applied, when uh, we or people operating on our behalf uh, or to our benefit have applied for those, 
Um, they have all been rejected and rejected under the basis of a pending prosecution. Uh, and to reveal even a single word would be to uh, compromise the government's pending prosecution or alternatively to damage US national security. Now, the government in this process has had to admit some details. For example, they've had to admit uh, that the uh, case against us is being run formally by the Department of Justice National Security Division and the Department of Justice Criminal Division. Um, uh, and that the lead agency is now the, on the ground is now the FBI. Uh, but their argument for why not even a single word uh, of those hundreds of thousands of pages can be released uh, is, yes, that uh, national security would be damaged on the one hand, and on the other hand, the pending prosecution would be damaged. But that the judge cannot look at a single page to make that determination. Uh, neither can any expert that we appoint with a security clearance look at a single page. Uh, and that has led to a judgment uh, in uh, US federal court that um, um, that the government is correct. Uh, if it simply claims that it might harm US national security, there is no need for the judge or for an independent expert to introspect into that claim. Uh, and that there is a necessity to show, quote, uh, appropriate deference to the executive in matters of national security, unquote. That is a US federal court judge uh, blocking us from any ability to obtain justice in the case as it stands because the United States government claims uh, that to reveal even a single word out of hundreds of thousands of pages would be to damage US national security and damage its pending prosecu prosecution and that no one else can look into its claims. Uh, so similarly, the case in Sweden, uh, which we shouldn't even call a case, it's formally a preliminary investigation, uh, it has used its status as a preliminary investigation to deny me the rights of a defendant because I have not been charged. I don't have a whole swathe of rights, which admittedly in Sweden uh, um, are often not respected anyway but not even to have those rights, not even to have, for example, not even to be able to present to the court uh, SMS records which prove the corruption in the case on behalf of the Swedish police, where the woman herself says the police uh, made it up. Um, so that's a developing process, which I think has arisen out of a conflict between um, between the standards that were erected during the Cold War by the West, the legal standards, and if you like, the claimed moral standards uh, of certain um, rights for individuals, including defendants, uh, and a post-Cold War atmosphere where the state, of course, wants to assert itself as an authority. Now, when there are uh, uh, journalists or dissidents that are undermining uh, the perception of the state's authority, and perception is everything as far as authority is concerned, uh, then there's a need to try and uh, um, apply authority and general deterrence to those people, but at the same time a desire to not completely sweep away uh, the uh, legal system and the rights for individuals, which in part largely emerged as a result of the Cold War and a desire to show how the West was doing things differently uh, to the Soviet Union. So the end result is to, um, is to push, um, the, end, the end result is to push uh, the deterrent uh, and punishment phase of cases into the pre-trial and into the investigative phase. And we can see that in a number of other cases in the United States involving national security, for example, the case of uh, Thomas Drake, uh, where he was hounded for uh, enormous charges uh, and eventually uh, a settlement where uh, he received not even an imprisonable offense. But nonetheless, uh, the damage was done, done and the general deterrent was done. Uh, I am confident uh, that uh, I and the people around me, we are going to win this situation. Uh, we can see that the bricks are gradually falling falling into place. 
it's, it is a question of time. It might be quite a long time. But is it is it the case during this time uh, that the unjust ends uh, by the United States and its allies will have been achieved anyway uh, through a profligate abuse of process? 